Hello class, welcome to Algebra Lesson 04, which is all about ratios and proportions. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to compare and solve ratios. This should be quite a bit of review for you today, actually. So looking at some vocabulary, a ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. Ratios are often expressed in the following three ways. So sometimes you will see ratios written kind of as a fraction, like three over four, or you'll see them written as three, colon 4, or you will see them written as 3, 2, 4. And 3 and 4 can be replaced with any number, so I could rewrite this as x over y, or x to y, or again, you say it the same way, x to y. Okay, so those are three different ways that you can write a ratio. All of them are correct. The most common one that I use is the fraction. Okay, then a proportion is when you take those ratios, you take two of them, and you make an equation um, stating that they are equal. So, example one, determine if ratios are equivalent. Determine whether 7 sixths is equivalent to 52 over 48. So 7 over 6, does that equal 52 over 48? So there are a few different ways that you can solve this. First of all, you could say 7 divided by 6 equals 1.166 repeating. You and, oops, sorry. So 7 divided by 6, and then you could do 52 divided by 48. And if that gives you the same decimal, you know that they are equivalent. However, it doesn't. So we know that the answer is no, and that's from the first way of solving it. A second way you can solve it is to do um, cross products. So what you can do is you can say any um, numbers in the diagonal. So 7 times 48 equals 336, and then you would do 6 times 52. And since we already stated that these aren't equivalent fractions, we know that they're not, it's not going to work out. But if these two numbers were equal, it would be an equivalent uh, ratio. Another way to solve it, because I'm all about showing you multiple ways to solve things, is to simplify fractions. So. 7 over 6, that can't really re reduce any further unless um, you were to make it a mixed number, and we don't want to do that. So that fraction's already reduced. But 52 over 48, I know that can reduce because, let's see, 52 divided by 2 would be 26. 48 divided by 2 would be 24. Again, if you divide by 2, 13 over 12. So Again, as you can see, these two fractions are not equivalent, so the answer would be no. Okay, so the first way, I just divided and figured out, do they have the same decimal? No. The second way is to multiply on the diagonals, and if they're equal, they become equivalent, but in this case, they were not equal, so they are not equivalent. And the third way is to just reduce each fraction down to its simplest form without making it um, a mixed number and see if they're equal that way. So you can do any of these three methods. That is up to you. All right, this time I want you to determine whether 3 elevenths is equivalent to 21 seventy-sevenths. Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully you got yes as an answer that these ratios are equivalent. I just wrote out the work showing the three different methods that I just taught you on the last slide so you can compare your work to mine to see if you're doing it correctly. If you have questions, please let me know. All right, example two, determine if ratios are equivalent. All right, solve each proportion. If necessary, round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so this is um, where I use something called cross, multiply, and divide. Um, that's kind of the shortcut, but... Um, I'll walk you through it, okay? So on the last slide, um, we used, in the second method, uh, we multiplied on the diagonals. So I'm going to do that again. 
I'm going to multiply in the diagonal. So 1 times 14 equals 2 times m, right? So 1 times 14 is just 14 equals 2m. And then I just have to think 2 times what number gives me 14? 7. So m equals 7. So this is one way that you can write that problem out. Another way you could write this problem is <clears throat> you pick, I'm going to rewrite it, 1 over m equals 2 over 14. All right, another way to do this is you pick the diagonal that has two numbers and no variable. So in this case, that's 1 and 14, and you multiply. And then you take whatever the last number is, so in this case we haven't done anything with the 2 yet, and you divide by 2. So you say 1 times 14 divided by 2. And if you do that, you also get 7. So cross multiply means that you're multiplying on that di diagonal. And then divide means you're dividing by whatever number hasn't been used yet. And this works even if we were to flip everything. Let's say I totally flip my fraction upside down. I would still multiply on the diagonal with the two numbers and divide by the number that has not been touched yet. And you can see I would still have 1 times 14 divided by 2, which is still 7. Okay? Now I want you to try this problem on your own. Good luck. Okay, for this problem, hopefully you ended up with... 18 as an answer. So y equals 18. If you have questions on that problem, please be sure to reach out for some help. Um, you can ask either a friend, you can ask me, I'm happy to help you. Uh, but make sure you get your questions answered so that way you're ready to do the homework. And while you're doing the homework, if you have questions, ask so you're ready for the test. All right, that is everything I have for you today. I hope you have a great day.